There's only a couple required fields mm -hmm. because, and the age one is unique because down there it's, it's like hopefully you've got how old they are in a number, if not maybe a date. If you got none of those, just call them an adult. Mm -hmm. um, you can do a photo for the patient, all their vitals, chief complaints. And I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get more creative at these, but yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> It hurts when I go like this. It hurts really bad <coughs> and stuff. <laughs> really basic. You can see what they what happened to them previously. Um, they get their ID. Mm -hmm. You go see them in the medical station, where the doctor will be like, "Here's." They fill out their normal um, history of present illness, treatment, past medical history. The diagnoses, and one of the focuses is research lately. We're trying to validate the software through research, trying to get published in some way, shape, or form. And so we've done things like um, being able to, instead of free form your diagnoses, because that's a pain to go back and try to perform research on, oh, yeah. we've been trying to get them in a concept dictionary where they can go through and kind of pick which problem is there. So you're using SNOMED? Um, for the stuff? Or um, this one we're computer. using uh, Bootstrap Type Ahead, which uses Ajax, so it sends a little call to the uh, server and gets everything the, back. The database behind it, all these codes and stuff, I mean, all this stuff's out there is Snowmed. Snowmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the concepts? Should, yeah, be careful. Without, the, without the W, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is that like an open... Uh, uh, well, it's a structured nomenclature of clinical terms. Uh, Structured nomenclature medical clinical term. It's SNOMED dash CT. Um, I, I've had my head wrapped around that for two years now. It's, it's kind of a recent thing, right? The last couple of years. Uh, yeah, it's really required for, for OC for OC twenty fourteen certification. Yeah. Okay. For meaningful use too. Yeah. If you if you were into like this, you, you you're not ONC certified. Right. But there's an awful so, lot of stuff you're going to need for that. Uh, but if you just wanted here. to start with ONC certification, right. you'd have to have SNOMED integrated into your system. Okay. Uh, That's good this, to know. Is, this is like where I could help if, if you if you go to get into it. Yeah. I'd be happy to talk to you about any of that stuff. When I got into it, I had nobody, I had no mentors. That'd be great. <laughs> and, um, and I've yeah. so it's, it's been killing me. <laughs> so it's like a library of concepts. Yes. Kind of. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's got like big like what are they twelve digit one and a half numbers on them. Most of them are very long numbers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. When if you're storing these in your database, use a long int or double or yeah. Double. <laughs> yeah. Right. A, Probably the will do it. I, I found that out. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, there's numbers. about one and a half million terms I think oh, in the huge. SNOMED database. Yeah. Good to know. I'm definitely yeah. looking into that. Um, and it's all free. That's the best part. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so ours was just. Um, with our collaboration with Wayne State School of Medicine, they've got a couple of guys there that are really dedicated to this, and they've provided us with kind of concepts of what they we should do. Okay. Um, <laughs> something like that, probably. I get an yeah. email, but I don't know what happens before that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a big change going on. Sorry, with the okay. U.S. in October, if, as long as they don't delay it again, <laughs> they're going from ICD-9 oh, diagnosis yeah, codes, 10. which are about five characters long, to ICD-10, which are like half a dozen or more, and it's a combination of letters and numbers I, it now. Could be, it could be three characters. The right, ICD right. ICD-10 is just a, another whole mess. It's like International Classification of Disease or something is yeah. what that stands for. That's Interesting. A big, it's Interesting. a big, so a lot of the healthcare clinics are like freaking out because they got to get ready. They're they got to make sure all their EMRs are ICD-10 compliant so they can get paid from wow. all the insurance companies yeah. and everything. Yeah. We haven't brought it back to the States yet, and we haven't used it in any yeah. clinics here. Right. And That's one of the unique things that we ran into, though, um, in relation to states is that we have the HIPAA laws, right? Mm -hmm. And that's very, very bureaucratic and very intense. But when a, when a medical team goes from America to a foreign country like Haiti, HIPAA still applies, mm -hmm. right? So just because they're patients in another country doesn't mean that you can be unethical with their data. There's, right. the, our physicians are still confined with HIPAA, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. Yeah, that right. is um, Okay, so, and then after you do the base, their, their medical treatment, you can go through the pharmacy um, and you can and then the pharmacist can say, okay, we're going to you know, dispense Tylenol and aspirin. Mm -hmm. Or they can replace it with whatever's in, whatever they need to replace it with. Um, so yeah, some good old morphine or something. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever works really. Um, download more RAM, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> um, and so, and then one one of the classes at Wayne State actually implemented this whole research system where physicians can come in and choose a primary data set. I'm not sure how good the data is going to be on this one, but you can select like age, and then you can turn it into a pie chart, and then you can specify the dates, and then it'll show you everything that they did. And so that's pretty cool because they don't have to get their hands dirty in the database or hire some research guy at the university to do any of that. <clears throat> so is this, you can extract this, I would assume, and put it into some formal file format that would be, you know, usable in other... In the reports or okay. whatever they want to do with it, yeah. I think that's what this does. I'm not sure I think that this works. This is the development branch off of uh, my... There we go. Ah, so it's getting there. But yeah, that's the idea. So they can take that image and place it into their research study. Whatever, whatever they're working on. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> or they can sit down at night while they're out um, in Haiti and look and see what they did perhaps the day before or the two days before that or even on their entire last trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So if you wanted to send any of your data, maybe someone wanted like a paper copy of it or something, would they just print it as like a PDF or something? Or That's being worked on um, this semester where a student is trying to, I think the tool they use is called iText. It's a painful piece of software to work <laughs> with, it really is. But he's trying to export all the information into a PDF so that you can save it and print it or cool. whatever they need to do. I was going to say, yeah, they use a conti continuity of care documents often CCDs, now. It's kind of the yeah. standard. It's like an XML-based oh, okay. where you have like a lab section, medication section, and then okay. import it it's into another similar, database. I know he's not using XML. I think he's doing it programmatically. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, cool. For sharing data amongst practices, the CCD stuff is really pretty good. Yeah. It's... Uh, I fought with it and fought with it, and then finally <laughs> we got it, and now it's now we're happy. So the XML turns into a PDF. Is that the well, no, that's well, two separate. To yeah, yeah. Okay. separate, separate things. Things. Just yeah. having yeah. a structured format for the data. Oh, yeah, like a XML universal. Export exactly. Out, yeah, yeah, got that, it. That, that all all certified systems have to be able to support import and export. It. What's it called? A CDA. Correct. It's a yeah. It's a continuity of care document. Yeah. And they have different versions of it. There's a CCD dash A. And so certain programs support certain yep. CCD formats, yep. but cool. if you can export that, and then other EHRs can import your CCD yeah. and integrate it into universal. your chart, into their chart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see. Have you done the direct yeah. transmission stuff? Too? Yes. It's pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so is there any effort to like scrub the data and provide it as research material yes, to others? Yes, we've de-identified large amounts oh, of it so that we could good. send it to them. Nice. Yep. And right now we're working on identifying what these teams find important specifically, right? So we want to be able to tell them there's a diabetic person living in this area and they come every single time and so bring your diabetes medicine because yeah. they've had people die because there's no diet, no sure. insulin for diabetes. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you're serving a different a different uh, group than I am, but it's yeah, really interesting. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you different groups, like if you go to an impoverished area within the United States, I mean, if you get through the HIPAA rules and all that stuff, eventually you'd have doctors volunteering, you know, what is it, volunteer doctors, you know, going into, you know, areas where there's a lot of male and uh, impoverished people, mm -hmm. you know, living in squalor or something, you know, yeah. and so that same kind of software would be usable for that. That's, that would be awesome. So you, you said you were going for a grant on one specific piece there. Are you looking at more grant money? Or are you we're doing grants for the femur in a box, and we've got one submitted for that. We've also got one submitted for complying with HIPAA for that centralized database. Um, and those are the only two we've got submitted right now. Because it's <laughs> writing a grant is a really long process. <laughs> so we're, we're working our way through that stuff right now. We haven't thought of anything else that I don't think we're working on right now. Okay, so if you get HIPAA uh, compliance, right, then you could maybe do some things yes. within the United States, and that opens it up to yes. all kinds of other... It, it really, though, to do it, something in the United States, it's really going to be ONC certified. Yes. So there's a lot of stuff to do, not just, like, when I say HIPAA, there's yeah. all kinds of, as yeah. you guys have brought yeah, up. Yeah, you got to go through the certification process that's it's expensive fancy. and... The big companies are cranking up the barrier to entry. Yes. And making it really hard for us little. The bureaucracy doesn't help. Yeah. If you're not going to use phones for uh, fingerprint recognition, what are you going to use? 
So, you said you're not, you I'd like use to use phones, yeah. but it's closed to developers <coughs> at this point in time. They have, and I don't know how to hook up it, hook it up, but there's little like, like $70 fingerprint scanners that you can mm -hmm. use and you can plug it in. Um, but I haven't done any work around how to hook that up to a web application yet. Okay. So that's probably part of the box too, maybe? Or no? no. Um, that wouldn't be part of the box because I think the box is strictly for um, deploying the internet and the application yeah. itself. So where that fingerprint scanner would hook into, like, I don't know if I can hook it into an iPad. I don't you know, know much, much around that at all. That's going to be something you guys are going for now. Yeah. It's one of the things we're thinking about. Um, and while we were down there, the, the Ministry of Health from Haiti paid us a visit. Um, they sent like three or four representatives. And we're like, I'm like, this is great. You know, they want to see what patients, what, what's happening out here, because they heard about us. And so I was just going to hand them over, like, you know, I'll send you an email with every every single thing that's happened, all the data, you can have it. Nope, we have paper books. So they sat down and went through and wrote down everything because oh. their government doesn't even isn't even digital. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, that's where like if you could export everything into PDFs or something, that would help them. That would help and if they had print printers. Their, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have to print it at that point. But, yeah, even a laptop to view it out. Yes. Yeah. Anything, yeah. so that was interesting. Or LPCs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that they have web browsers, right? So you could use OLPC. You, have you heard of those though? One uh, laptop. One per laptop child. per child. Okay. And uh, it actually has mesh networking built into them. So. Yeah, but do those. Uh, I thought it was just <laughs> that PC. project has come and gone a couple of times. What's yeah. left of it? I, I'm not sure it's really there anymore. Yeah, it's old. I thought he said old PCs. No, oh. it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how viable that is. I, you know, just using tablets or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some. Um, this is. Do you know that mesh networking? Is that built into Sugar? I think so. Sugar OS. That's a Sugar OS is a Linux distro, and um, with the mesh networking, as long as you have like five, you know have them in a row, then only one of them has to be connected to the access point, and then they all work off of each other. I've heard about the yeah, mesh a whole works. village full of them. It's amazing. They all talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you had like two access points, you know, and they can be, you know, a thousand yards apart, as long as as you have nurse stations in between them mm -hmm. or whatever, then everybody would be talking amongst each other. And I I have no experience setting up a mesh network, yeah. but it sounds really complicated. There's a lot of information. Yeah, yeah. yeah.